This is our first look at the digestive system. We are going to start, as usual, with looking at the functions of the digestive system. There are four major jobs in um, digestion. The first is digestion itself. The second is secretion. Then we have absorption. And finally, excretion. These functions are listed in the order in which they occur. So digestion occurs first thing and early on, then secretion, then absorption, and the final step of any digestive process is excretion. So in this lecture, we're going to look primarily at digestion and kind of the beginning parts of how your body starts to process food. So digestion is basically the um, breakdown of large food molecules. There are two ways that the body breaks down or digests food. The first is called mechanical, which is a physical process. Mechanical digestion is the physical breaking apart of big molecules, say a hamburger, into smaller versions of that same hamburger. So mechanical digestion is done by chewing, usually, as well as some um, muscle action within the stomach. The second type of digestion is chemical digestion. And chemical digestion is a process where the hamburger is now changed into something else. So chemical digestion converts molecules into some other type of chemical. It changes it by moving bonds, by rearranging structure, by breaking it down into parts that are so small they're no longer um, chemically identical to how the food started. This process takes place um, throughout different organs of the digestive system. Some um, kind of synonymous terms that you'll hear our alimentary canal also describes the entire digestive system, as does the GI or gastrointestinal tract. So gastro means stomach, intestinal means intestines, right? So stomach and intestines. Um, but the GI tract can refer to everything from the mouth all the way through to the anus. The entire alimentary canal is about 25 feet from start to finish, so the starting point is where food enters the mouth. The finish point is where food exits the body, really not as food anymore, but now as solid waste at the anus and rectum. All the way along that entire canal are, is a wall that is consistent in terms of structure for the most part. The wall of the entire alimentary canal has four pretty distinct layers. So the first layer is the mucous membrane, or in this picture they call it the mucosa. That is this layer right here, so we're at the very innermost portion. That is primarily made up of smooth connective tissue. Um, the body wants that to be smooth because it allows for food to move through easily. If that wasn't smooth tissue, it would cause some friction with food and that would be fairly painful. Um, even though the tissue is smooth, it's not completely circular. It has these folds and ridges which increases surface area and it also allows for more um, absorption and secretion of chemicals down the line. Um, it's also something I should note is this space right here, all of this yellow space, this is called the lumen, and that is all hollow. That's where the food and water and whatever you, you know, take in as part of your diet, that's where that material goes. It moves through that space. The next layer as we move outward is called the submucosa, and that's shown here kind of in gray. The submucosa is also connective tissue, and it houses... Um, several different kinds of glands that make different digestive chemicals. It also houses a really rich blood supply for the delivery of oxygen and the absorption of the things that you eat. And it also has nerves, which help to communicate with the brain about what's happening in the digestive system. So the submucosa is really important in um, the delivery of nutrients as well as the removal of waste. The next layer is the muscular layer. So we have two parts to that system and they're both here kind of in red. 
So there are two kinds of smooth muscle happening here. There's circular muscle, which is shaped just like you would imagine in a circular pattern. And then there's longitudinal muscle, which runs the length of the canal. That helps to move food through the digestive system and to keep things moving in one direction. The final layer is the serosa layer, which is the outermost layer and it's very thin. You can see it here. Um, kind of in the orange that runs all around. Um, that is connective tissue that connects parts of the digestive system to surrounding tissue, as well as provides protection for the inner layers of the wall. And it is somewhat smooth to um, prevent friction as the body is moving around so that your digestive system isn't rubbing against other tissue and causing damage. So when we talk about digestion, there are um, a couple of other processes taking place. So I said at the beginning when we talked about mechanical digestion that that involves the physical breaking down of food into smaller versions of that food. Um, chewing is part of that process, but mixing is also a part of mechanical digestion because mixing basically takes the food mixes it um, with digestive chemicals and things and pulls the food apart into smaller pieces. So if you think about your stomach kind of digesting and growling and gurgling, that's what's happening in the process of mixing. The food is actually physically being mixed, sort of like a cement mixer inside your stomach. The other process which is not involved in mechanical digestion is the process of propelling. So propelling moves... For food through the digestive system sort of like this. If we could imagine the contractions of smooth muscle in the walls of the digestive system, it would look sort of like this. Propelling is a wave-like process, and that motion, that wave-like motion is called peristalsis. Um, it's sort of like if you've ever seen an earthworm or a centipede crawl along the ground, that is how um, propelling looks. It's, there's a contraction of muscles and then an extension of muscles and that extension helps to push the food along. Okay, so let's look at the first structure involved with the digestive system and that structure of course is the mouth. That is where food and drink enter the body's digestive system and that is where digestion begins. Primarily mechanical digestion there is also some chemical digestion taking place in the mouth, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So the parts of the oral cavity, that's kind of the anatomy term for the mouth. We obviously have the cheeks, which are kind of the side borders of the oral cavity, not really involved in um, digestion whatsoever. We also have the lips, which are the front border or the anterior border of the oral cavity. Um, the lips provide basically sensory information. Is your food hot or cold? Is it sharp or smooth? Things of that nature, but again, not involved in digestion. Then we have the bottom or the inferior border of the oral cavity, which is the tongue. So the tongue actually has a small role in digestion because it does help to mix the food around um, with your saliva, which is part of chemical digestion. And it also helps to kind of roll the food into a form or a size that is easier for the body to swallow. Obviously, the tongue is also involved with taste buds, which isn't really a part of digestion, but it does give you some information about the food. The superior portion of the digestive or pardon me of the oral cavity is called the palate. So the palate is the roof of the mouth and it has two parts. It has a hard palate which is this front portion you can see there that it's made of bone and then it has a soft palate which is a more skin-like portion at the very back. So at the very back of that soft palate is a structure called the uvula which is found right here. You can see the uvula if you open your mouth really wide and look in the mirror. It's that kind of dangling structure at the back of the throat. The uvula helps to protect your airway from food inadvertently getting swallowed down into the airway.
So to continue with the mouth, um, you might have seen in that previous slide in the picture, there were three sets of tonsils. So the lingual tonsils lay just underneath the tongue. That should be a G. The pharyngeal tonsils, pharynx, so pharyngeal is a part of the word pharynx, which means throat. So pharyngeal tonsils are found at the back of the throat. These are the ones that are often removed when someone has um, a history of infections. And the palatine are found in the roof of the mouth. So these are three sets of tonsils. They come in pairs. There are two lingual, two pharyngeal, two palatine. And they are part of the your body's defense system. So they filter out germs and things that you breathe in. Um, so again, not involved in digestion, but serve an important role in the body. Finally, the major last major structure you'll find in the mouth are the teeth. Um, primary teeth are those that you would think of as like your kid teeth or your, your little person teeth. Most people have about 20 of them. They begin to grow when you are an infant, usually between 6 and 12 months. And then they continue to grow till you're about 4, 5, or 6. At that point, at about 6, um, <clears throat> your adult or secondary teeth start to grow within the jaw. And they basically push and shove those primary teeth out of the way so that you have teeth that are more um, well-developed, they're stronger, they're larger because your body is now larger, and they're also um, able to withstand more action so they last longer in your life. Since your adulthood is much longer than your childhood, you need stronger teeth to get through adulthood. Teeth are involved in the process of digestion. They are heavily involved in mechanical digestion in particular. So remember that mechanical digestion is physically breaking things apart into smaller pieces. The teeth do that job. Um, the teeth primarily, we're just looking at the part of the tooth that is above the surface of the mouth, um, which in this picture is just this portion what dentists call the crown of the tooth, which is that portion. The crown of the tooth is mostly made up of this protein called dentin, which is actually fairly soft. So when someone has a cavity, for example, um, that usually means that there is an opening in the tooth um, enamel. The enamel has worn down or it's become damaged. And now the dentin below is exposed, which can be really harmful because germs can get in there. That can infect the blood supply, that can infect all the way down into the root of the tooth, which can then infect the jaw. Those are problems. So definitely you want to be able to protect and reseal the tooth, which is why dentists uh, perform cavities and fillings, to or remove cavities and perform fillings to protect the tooth and the jaw. Dentists called the... So that is it for our first look at the digestive system. Um, there's lots more to come, but these are the questions that should guide your summary for this portion of notes. Please make sure you have all of the information covered by these questions in the body of your notes. And then make sure that you bring two to three discussion questions to our next class. I'll see you then.